Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Linguistics. This is part two of morphological analysis. Uh, before getting started, I just want to uh, keep in mind that this series is not aimed only at Muhammad First University students, but also um, at other students who study in other universities. Um, this includes S5, S4, and S6 students as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first exercise we have, how do you express the meaning vary in Pukomshi language? Uh, fill in the blanks. So we have here a language called Pukomshi and uh, we have two lists, adjective and then adjective plus vary. So we have white, which becomes very white, green, very green, black, very black, etc. And so we have to figure out what is the morpheme that specifies vary in this Pukomshi language. So if we pay attention to the words given in Pokomshi language, we notice in order to specify or, or in order to form adjective plus vary in Pokomshi, we, have, we just have to uh, duplicate the morpheme or the word given. So sack becomes sack sack, ras becomes ras ras, etc. Now we are given um, words there that are expressed with adjectives or adjective plus vary, and we have to figure out what 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 their equivalence is in Pukonshi language. So we have quan. So what is the equivalent of very ripe in Pukonshi language? So as I said, in order to express that meaning, we have just to duplicate the word or the morpheme given. So quan become or can become becomes this. This is as far as the, the, you know, the word ripe is concerned. The second one, nim, which means big, we have just to duplicate, to duplicate it as well, nim, nim. And the third one is kak, which means red. We have to do the same thing. So this is as far as the second question is concerned. So we have just filled in the blanks. So the first question was, how do you express the meaning vary in Pukomshi? Well, I have, we have just, um, you know, um, answered that question. I mean, implicitly, when we're talking about how, um, you know, how we will go about um, expressing the meaning vary plus adjective in Pukomshi language. So I have said that we duplicate the morpheme or the word given to us. So the answer would be the meaning vary the meaning vary in Pukamshi is expressed by duplicating the whole morpheme. And this process is called reduplication. So if, for those who don't know what reduplication is, it's just a morphological process uh, whereby a morpheme is duplicated in order to express a certain meaning. So for example, in this language, in order to express the meaning vary, we have to duplicate um, the whole word or the whole morpheme. Sometimes we don't have to uh, duplicate the whole morpheme, we just have to duplicate part of the morpheme, which is called partial uh, reduplication. So uh, for those of you who don't know, these morphological processes, I will be um, you know, creating a video in which I'm going to talk about these morphological processes by giving um, examples of each one. So this is as far as the first exercise is concerned. So let's move to the second exercise. So the second exercise says study the data below. So Ulwa spoken in Nakagargana, Nikargana, this is a very you know, hard name to pronounce. So we have words here and then another words here. So we have Asna clothes. Clothes is just a you know a noun and we have his clothes. His clothes in order to express possession in this uh, Ulwa language. So what did we do to express the meaning possession in this language? We just added a K or KA morpheme in the middle of the of the morpheme or of the, the root. Uh, Arcabos, the same. In order to um, express possession in this language, we just added the same morpheme in the middle of the word. Uh, this is as far as the first language is concerned. Um, for the second language, which, called, which is called Lao Tien Kato, uh, we, in order to convert verbs 
to nouns, we do the following. So katas, which is to name, a verb, so converted to a noun, we add or we added this morpheme R in the middle of the, of the root. Kat, cash it, to kill, in order to convert to a noun dead, we did the same thing. We added this um, affix or morpheme in the middle of the, of the word. And the same goes to a womb, to give, we added this R after the first consonant um, of the word, which, which gave us gifts. So the first question is, which affix do the languages use for their derivations? So which affixes? Now, the first question, we should just add or state what affixes these languages use for their derivation. So, as I said earlier, the first language uses this morpheme or this affix in order to express, to, in order to express uh, possession. So the first we say, um, Olwa uses um, K, K-A affix. This is uh, the first language. And for the second lang language, Lautian, Lautian Kato uses um, R as, a, as an affix. So this is as far as the first question is concerned. So we said that which affix do the languages use for the derivations? So we concluded that this first language, which is called Olwa, uses this affix K, K A in order to express possession. And the second language uses this R in order to express or in order to convert verbs into nouns. The second question says, what meaning do the affixes add? So now we have to figure out what do these affixes add to the overall meaning of the word. So in the first example, in the first um, language, Olwa, what changes did they occur when we added uh, this morpheme or this affix um, into the word? So we have clothes, or we had the first clothes, and when we added this, um, this affix in the middle, then it becomes his clothes. And his clothes, or his gun, or he, my gun, it expresses possession. So the first meaning is possession. In this, so this morpheme, or this affix, um, expresses possession in all one language. The second affix, which is R, expresses um, nouns. So in order to convert verbs into nouns in this Lautian Cato language, we add this affix or infix to be specific um, into in the middle of the word in order to express our, or in order to you know, convert verbs into nouns in this language. So the answer to the, to, to the second question then is, so for all one language, for all language, K expresses possession. But in Lautian, Lautian Cato language, this R expresses, or not expresses, uh, converts. It's better. Converts, converts verbs into nouns. So let's go, let's check this again. So the first language, yes, the first language uses this ka, this affix or this infix in order to um, express possession. And the second language uses this r, this r at infix in order to express or in order to convert verbs into nouns. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, see you next time, inshallah.